going, Johnny? It's going, man. It's going. Dude, I had something exciting here happen uh, Friday night. Friday? Friday night. Sweet. This past Friday night. Ready? What, had, what was going on? I had a drive-by. Really? Yeah. Not shitting you. No we, way. We, yes. We had a drive-by. Uh, let me tell you the story. Let me take you back there. Drive-by shooting. Right here in my neighborhood at my house. Uh, 11 o'clock Friday night. And I had my uh, Beats by Dr. Dre earbuds in. They're mm -hmm. like rubberized. They're thick. When you have those in, you can't hear shit, right? Right. But uh, around 11 o'clock Friday night, I heard a boom outside. Crystal clear through the headphones. So you, you knew it was loud, right? So I immediately stopped the show I was watching, and I knew like, like an explosion happened. Yeah. Right? So I immediately run to the window, don't see nothing. Um, I get a hold of my downstairs neighbor who saw it all. Truck slowly drove by and shot, not a gun, it was a drive-by fireworking. Oh. So a bunch of kids rolled by at like five miles an hour and they didn't shoot like a bottle rocket or like a, one of those Roman candles. They shot like one of the giant ones you'd see in the air that make a huge, you know, kajoom. Like a cannon? Yeah. Like nice. one of those giant ones. Fireballs? They, sh they shot it, not at this house, but at the neighbor's house, which is like 10 feet from us. <laughs> but they did it so slowly. But by, by, by the time they had the first one, the boom, my neighbor ran out there, maybe even armed, and fucking saw the kids. He's like, he put his arms up like, what are you guys doing? And then, boom, they shot another one. <laughs> But they shot it at the neighbors, and then after the second one, they peeled out and took off. He called the cops, gave a description of the truck and the plates. I don't know if the police ever uh, caught him, but um, I was waiting to get a knock on my door from the police asking to see if I had heard anything. But yeah. That's wild. We had a legit drive-by. But instead of guns, it was two giant fireworks, and it was targeted at the new neighbors next door. I guess an angry ex found out where she lives. And uh, my car is parked like literally like five feet from hers, which I think was the target. <laughs> oh, so I was a little concerned. Uh, like, did, did my S shit get fucked? So up? was the next guy. Yeah, ex boyfriend. I think it's an ex boyfriend. That's just uh, you know nothing better to do. You know, wow. Late twenties, COVID happening. Nothing better to do than you know put on kicks ninety seven point nine. You know, hammer down a. 12 pack of Budweiser and yeah, you know that's funny do an old fashioned hillbilly drive by yeah. I don't know if I would ever have done that when I was that age uh, I've done some crazy stuff but I don't know about we all get pissed I thought it was teenagers yeah because when I was in high school we would get drunk drive around and do stupid shit not I don't think we ever fired like major fireworks at somebody's house yeah that's kind of a fire hazard but i I've, <laughs> I've been in some cars where the drivers did some pretty crazy stuff um i never did this but i was in the back seat of my friend uh my friend nick's uh grand cherokee one night yeah. and he proceeded to drive up on somebody's front lawn and then did donuts for about 30 seconds and i'm in the back seat <laughs> laughing holding on like what are we doing dude we're doing donuts in the middle of the night on someone's front lawn while they're sleeping you know you'd ever do anything like that yeah i've done that donuts uh, but Tons of them. now that we're adults how angry would you be if you went outside in the morning and just saw your entire front lawn torn up you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah. just because a bunch of kids had nothing better to do but we were those assholes yeah you know so i don't know but would, yeah kids will be kids i would have done that yeah Kids will be kids, and uh, when you get your heart broken, yeah, goes. sometimes you do stupid shit. Even when you get into your thirties, like you know, you go a little loopy. Having a Fourth of July firework display shot out your window at your ex girlfriend's house. I wonder if they caught his paint like on his car, like from the sparks. You know, was there? I'm sure there was sparks. Like I don't know. I didn't. There had to have been. I wish I got to see some of it. You know, I wish I could have been outside to you know intervene or something. But all I heard was a boom. That's insane. Uh, dude, I have a tip. I have a hot tip that came in. And maybe we'll be the first to break. I don't know. It's probably all over YouTube. I want to see if any of you guys at home have this problem. I would ask you, Josh, but you don't seem to identify with any problems that most people have. <laughs> okay, so you I have an that. iPhone. I do, yeah. Do you ever use the speak to text? All the time, yeah. Okay. 
Have you ever told Siri to say the F U C K? No. Okay. A lot of us do. Anybody <laughs> out there knows that if you're auto speaking a text and you say fuck you, Siri always puts duck you. It thinks you say duck every time you say fuck. Oh yeah, it's auto correct. So if I was gonna speech text you tonight and I would be like Josh, fuck you, Siri would automatically put Josh duck you. Yeah. There's a fix. The fix is in. There's a fix. All you guys got to do, and it's been tested. Me and my buddy Mark just did it. You got to put a contact into your contact list on your iPhone. You don't need to put a, a number or nothing. You just got to put first name fuck, last name fuck as a new contact. All right. No phone number, no nothing. And then every time you say the word fuck, Siri will put in fuck instead of duck with a D. Oh. Yeah, so every word that Siri messes up for me, I might just add it in as a contact. Uh, contact. Huh. Yeah. That thing always messes up for me. Because I was thinking, like, every time I want Siri to say and, she puts in, I-N. Yeah. And every time I say in, she writes and. So I was thinking, I wonder if I made a contact called and, and, <laughs> if she'd actually put and when I told her to. <laughs> but I don't know. I think maybe in and and sound too much alike. Yeah. But yeah, if you want to fix her saying duck you she all need, the time she needs a lot of fixing when, when oh, i'm yeah. talking to her yeah but that's one of people's main complaints is that she never gets fuck right she always puts duck and there's the fix just add the word fuck as a contact <laughs> and that fixes it nice i'll uh, remember that when i'm you reminded me swearing at her yeah you reminded me <laughs> i did on the phone today that uh sunday is valentine's day yeah and uh surprise i'm so anti like valentine that it's 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 okay like christmas is a holiday fourth of july it's a holiday yeah. you know easter thanksgiving valentine's day valentine's a day was made up it's one of those hallmark holidays it's, they call it it's a nice holiday so you get to a Give What's a, nice about it? Give appreciation to whoever. It's you're one with, night. It's one night. A, one night a week, or one night every year that you have to be nice to your spouse. No, it doesn't have to be a spouse. It could be your friend. It could be anybody. <laughs> oh, so Valentine's Day just isn't for lovers. No, it's, it's not like Virginia. According from what I heard, they cha they're changing it in a small town in New Hampshire. Yeah, you told me that too. It's becoming Friendship Day instead yeah. of Valentine's Day. Uh, in the great old liberal state of New Hampshire. Well, Evidently, in one small town, it was too offensive to keep calling it Valentine's Day. <laughs> so it is now affectionately known as Friendship Day. Friends. And that makes me really curious to know what about Valentine was so triggering to this town that they had to change it. I don't know. You have no idea? No. That's no. all you heard was just... That's all I heard. Where'd you get this from? Fox? CNN? No, I was on NPR? A, no. Word of mouth word of mouth yeah word of mouth mouth that was actually a uh i believe it was an album by Ludacris. yeah w word of mouth <laughs> i was listening to warren g this week for some reason now the 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 young guns intro the regulators yeah <laughs> regulator <laughs> warren g dude that was rap rap is still good i've gotten way back into rap yeah actually that, that's a great tie-in um you know i've been streaming the hell out of some netflix yeah you're binge watching i am binging everything i can find like that's i'm, su that, I'm, su I'm surprised you even got out of the house this weekend that's my new obsession <laughs> you love to bust my balls about getting that but you gotta understand even if covid wasn't here yeah i would be only leaving the house to run errands and to go do stand-up you should get out more but be, be, because it's winter don't Dode. I hate dode. Yeah, dode? Here we go. Dode. It's winter, dude. Yeah, man. I'm a hermit. Yeah, we got to get out there. I'm a hermit in the wintertime because I, I don't like the cold. I don't like the snow. I love to drive in it if I could just manage to get rid of everyone else on the road. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Driving in the snow is a blast. Yeah, I love it. It's everybody else that's the problem yeah, for me. Yeah. You know? What I love is the people that go out there and uh, I don't know. Maybe you're one of these people. Like, you surprised me before. But I like the people, okay? You and I have lived in this area our whole life. Aside from living in North the Carolinas and stuff for a bit. I've had rear-wheel drive trucks, rear-wheel yeah. drive Mustangs, yeah. 
that didn't even have snow tires on it. They're and blast. I got through the winter here just fine. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now I got a front wheel drive car with uh, summer sport tires on it. It goes fine through the snow, right? Mm -hmm. But how many people do you see on the road? And I see it all the time in this city. They literally got Subaru Outbacks and Toyota RAV4s. They're full-time all-wheel drive. Yeah. And they put studded snows on them. Like, where are these people going? It's just because they're afraid, dude. Yeah, yeah. That's all it is. It, it's like some people just, like, have to get snows. Yeah. And it's like, if you know how to drive, you can drive around a bald rear-wheel drive Mustang <laughs> in the snow here. It'd yeah. be fine. Yeah. I got a kick out of here in the, the, the studded snow tires at the, at the pavement in, like, November. No, dude, there's like no snow whatsoever yeah, in the forecast. Yeah, you'll hear it in the May. I know. Even though I think you're supposed to take your snows off the end of April around here. It's like a law. Yeah. But uh, yeah, dude, but can you explain that on any logical level? Why would somebody with a four-wheel drive vehicle need studded snow tires? I don't know. Even if I lived on a hill, I could get up it with all seasons. Yeah, maybe they want to go through a cornfield around here. Or so. maybe just people have become just horrible drivers, so they need all these aids now, like yeah. ABS. Probably. Remember? Yeah. I How did we survive before anti-lock brakes? Yeah. We had to pump them ourselves, remember? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> now it does it for you, you know? Remember back in the day when you had to roll your own window down? Yeah. Oh, my God. The fucking... <laughs> oh. you know, everything's just done for you now. Now they got these Teslas that drive for you. Then yeah. you put on studded snow tires so you can go up a side of a mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back to your Netflix. What were you binging there? Okay, yeah, Netflix. Um, I've moved on to some great stuff to watch over the weekend. Um, okay. I made it through a new series called Dark. Okay. That's easy to remember dark yes it's phenomenal i can't even begin to explain what it's about it's it's nuts then you know i'm watching lucifer still just got turned on to a new show called roswell new mexico it's kind of like a sci-fi alien yeah. detective -y. it's not uh. a documentary you know yeah but it's like set in roswell but my point is, is that in doing all this binging on Netflix the last month with The 100 and everything else I've been binging, mm -hmm. the soundtracks and the music to like a lot of these shows is incredible. And it's introducing me to a lot of new artists. Hmm. I sent you two new artists that I discovered. Yeah, yesterday. yeah. And I'll uh, give them a listen to. Yeah. Um, one of them I wrote down the name so I could remember it. Uh, Nuvo Amor. Nouveau Amour. I think I'm saying that right. All right. And uh, it's just a, uh, he's, it's a one-man band. It's a, There's a lot of that, no? It's an Irish dude, but he goes by Nouveau Amour. And uh, I don't know, dude. It sounds like if Mazzy Star hooked up with early Coldplay. Yeah. And then you added some, like, Beatles 60s vibe into it. Hmm with some like uh really melodic uh synth and stuff it's it's just i don't know but my point is is that on top of how great these shows are on netflix some of them have just amazing soundtracks yeah. and it's allowing me to discover a lot of new music because where do you get new music these days the radios are horrible oh yeah nobody listens to radio anymore nobody nobody so how do you discover new music i'm surprised there you've got djs still yeah it should automatically be exactly programmed already exactly i think i think all of it is i don't think being a dj is Wait. like as complicated as it used to be where you had to have two cds queued up everything's digital yeah. so the entire playlist is probably already you know yeah inputted yeah so i mean just gotta hit a button yeah i mean we're gonna get to the point where like machines can pretty much automate anything we do yeah if they wanted to they could i mean completely eradicate your job field uh, they could have self-driving freight yeah, they will. I think you'll always need a driver in the, the cockpit. Yeah, maybe to monitor stuff. Yeah. But I even think like uh, like um, commercial airlines Yeah, will be remote piloted. Yeah. And they'll probably have a pilot on board just to kind of monitor stuff. in case. But, I, I, but I'm telling you, everything's going to be automated. Yeah. But yeah, man, um, those new shows on Netflix I'm watching are awesome. And like I said, what I love about it is it's... It's like my new source of finding new artists yeah. because they really try to pair up bands that are good, but they aren't commercially super successful. I watched a movie last night called Bliss. It was on Amazon Prime. Whoa. Whoa. Time, time, time out. Whoa. 
you don't watch movies. I don't. And I, second of all, when did you get Amazon Prime? I didn't. I went to a friend's house. I hung out with a friend last night, and we you watched. Ha- you hang out with friends? Yeah, I got a couple friends here and there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I met a I met a a woman that I'm I'm kind of technically. Oh, it's a woman. Friend. Yes. Oh, I see. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. but yeah, it was a cool movie. It's got Owen Wilson in it from uh, the guy from Zoolander. Yeah, I know who Owen Wilson is. <laughs> all right, all right. I was just making sure you knew. Yeah. Maybe some of our viewers didn't know. Yeah. It, what do you think? Owen Wilson's most prominent role was in was in Zoolander. No, he had tons of. Movies. Uh, he's been in everything. Yeah. Were you the one that was telling me somebody was talk somebody else was talking to me recently about Owen Wilson and how old he looks now? He does. He does. Was that you? He looked really old in the show, though. Maybe that was you. <laughs> I was just talking to about him. I don't even remember. <laughs> no, nah, it wasn't me. But so Bliss, huh? Yeah. What made you pull that up on Amazon Prime? Um, the girl that I'm seeing, she pulled it up. She wanted to check it out. I'm like, sure, I'm down. What's it about? It was basically kind of like a rehab drug movie. It was kind of. It was different. It had a crappy ending, but um, yeah, it's basically he was he was in rehab at the beginning of the movie, and then he went to a bar and he had a drink, and he met this woman. Apparently, this woman's like fake. Yeah. In his imagination. Oh, he it, hallucinated her. Yeah, and it's basically a giant, you know, Alice in Wonderland trip. Oh. And then he he's dr- he's drifting out of two worlds. I'm going to have to write that down. Yeah. It's kind of a neat movie. But, that uh, just made me think of something else. Oh. I don't know if we even talked about this on air, so to speak. But you asked me last week, maybe on the podcast or after, if I had uh, seen Uncut Gems. Yeah. That Sandler movie, it's on Netflix. Yeah. And I've been wanting to see that. <laughs> I've had Netflix this whole time and never like put two and two together. So I watched that over the weekend. Yeah. Did you have a little anxiety trip? I think I texted you. <laughs> I said, dude, this movie is stressing me out. Yeah. You, you've you seen it. Yeah, From the very start of the movie to the very end, yeah. you're like on the edge of your seat, stressed out. Stressed. Because his entire life in this movie is just so stressful. <laughs> I don't know how he even deals with it. And he just keeps digging himself deeper. And I'm just like, oh, my God. I could not live with myself if no. that was him. No, it was, uh... But I thought his acting was incredible it was adam sandler gets a lot of shit because like i don't know back when we were growing up he was famous for billy madison um uh, happy gilmore happy gilmore and stuff like that big but daddy big daddy and all those kind of goofy movies but you and i were talking um you own this movie um rain on me yeah that he did with don Cheadle. yeah um beautiful movie a tragic movie yeah but it just goes to show that sandler can act yeah he's not just a goofball that we've seen on snl and in billy madison he can really act and in, it, in this uncut gems he was really good yeah so yeah it's awesome i'm i'm extremely impressed and yeah so uh uncut gems was fantastic <laughs> what are you laughing at because you like my i gave you a reference and you liked it yeah so it's kind of like I'm yeah happy. you you end up jogging my memory you made me happy <laughs> Why, what? You made me happy. I make you happy? Yeah. <laughs> um, dude, the Super Bowl. I feel like the friggin' Patriots won. I think they did. It was like a massacre. Dude, I said the Patriots. They did, basically. The Patriots weren't in the Super Bowl. No, but they got Brady. But they enough got of them were. Yeah, it's they like, got... I'm sorry. I know Tampa Bay people are going to be like, what? But yeah, <laughs> sorry. Every Patriots fan is pretty much referring to the to Tampa Bay as the Tampa Bay Patriots. <laughs> because if you look at it, I'm a huge Patriots fan. And when the Patriots and Brady parted ways, people are like, oh, it's the biggest mistake. But I never had any ill will towards Brady. No, neither did I. If we didn't have Brady and Belichick, we wouldn't have had seven or six Super Bowls that titles. Right. Okay? So Brady doesn't owe us anything more, ever. Mm-hmm. So I'm happy that he's having success in Tampa. I've, I've never minded Tampa. And then they <laughs> added Gronkowski, yeah. who's a huge Patriots ex-staple. And then they also added Antonio Brown. Yeah. Antonio Brown's last team was the Patriots. Yeah. So there was another one in there, too. Gronkowski scored two touchdowns. Antonio Brown had a touchdown. So, I mean, the first three, I don't, yeah, well, the first two scores were, uh, no, Evans, 
But anyways, I only watched like a partial. Of it the first was just quarter. really cool to see three ex Patriots on a different team, especially Brady, and just how they crushed the Chiefs. <laughs> I mean, I thought it was going to be a close game, yeah. but I, I did not expect them to just. Yeah. The Chiefs didn't even have a touchdown. I know it was it was a massacre. It was, it was bad. It was, it was nuts. But it's probably one of the worst Super Bowls in history. But I mean, it was a blowout basically. Yeah, but I think I don't know if the ratings are out, but I bet you that was one of the most watched Super Bowls in history. It was up there, yeah. With everybody being trapped in the COVID and everybody wanting to see, you know, Tom Brady versus yeah. Patrick Mahomes and to see if Brady could win a seventh and uh yeah. Did you see the guy that came out running out on the field? Yeah. <laughs> the country's back to normal, man. I, I don't know if I could run down fifty yards wearing that. Man, that thing looks so jacked up up there in his butt crack. I was like, you uh, talking about the guy that ran across the field? Yeah. Yeah. He was wearing like his daughter's <laughs> yeah. ballet leotard or something. That guy running across <laughs> the field gave me hope. I'm like, we're back, baby. America's back. I guess he bet on it. Did you hear that? No. He bet that there was going to be a streaker or somebody that run out on the field. Yeah. How much you want to bet his book you don't pay up now? <clears throat> no. He, he according to, he got $34,000. And the fine was like a thousand dollars, so he, he technically made out. Dude, that's like saying uh, Patrick Mahomes won't have a touchdown, and like you go on the field and intercept the the ball that would have been a touchdown. Yeah, just because you put a bet that he wouldn't have one. Like uh, yeah. that's 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 actually kind of genius. <laughs> yeah, because like the Super Bowl has all kinds of prop bets. Like, yeah, like what color Gatorade the winning coach gets dumped on. Like what color it will be. Yeah, you can bet on the coin toss if it's tails or heads. Yeah. And there was a bet, a prop bet, obviously, to see if somebody would run on the field. And it was him. And, and the he... guy put money on it, and he went, and did that, that is brilliant. Dude, I'm sorry, but if, but if you can work the system like that, yeah. I think go for it. Yeah. If you can bend the rules and do something like that, then I think you deserve the money. But, man, that thing was so tight on him. <laughs> That's awesome. He must have been cutting into him. Yikes. Uh, listen up, dude. Why? Um... Nothing really funny about this, but I think we can make maybe make it funny because that's our job. But uh, somebody, see, you know that I don't watch the news. I don't watch the news either. I can't stand the news. You will never hear us talk about politics if we can help it on this show. Uh, don't so, don't so, go there. Yeah, yeah. We'll never go down to politics. But when you don't watch the news, you you don't hear about anything else that goes on either no because not all news is fake or about you know the, you know the morons in washington right so sometimes i get some cool stuff and uh a buddy of mine was telling me the other day that evidently since covid started uh nightmares have been on the rise Really? Yeah, and uh, they don't know why, but what's been discovered is that not only are nightmares on the rise, but a lot of people having these nightmares are dreaming about similar things, about their teeth falling out. That's, yes. That's kind of that's kind of messed up because yes. I think I had a dream. Yes. Uh, you aren't the only one. There are millions upon millions that's, of Americans that's kinda messed up. that have been having the same nightmare all having something to do with their teeth falling out yeah. and it all began when right around when covid did so what is giving so that's that's fascinating to me because i don't think they really even know what dreams are oh. or like what controls them whether we're controlling our dreams or whether they're just random blips and clips of our memories but why would nightmares be on the rise? And why would so many people be sharing the same nightmare? I don't know. I have theories. I know. I, I've looked up dreams and what they mean and stuff like that. I've actually looked up the teeth dreams. Yeah, but how can any scientist or doctor say, okay, if you dream of teeth, this is what it means? Like, what evidence do they have to back up any of those statements? Like, if you dream of a blue sky, it means that you want Merlot. Like, how would they possibly make... Uh, yeah, I, I hear you on that. You know? I, I don't know. I don't know, but sometimes... So what did they tell you about teeth? Though? I don't know. I don't remember, because this is the first time I'm hearing this, and it kind of, like, triggered me remembering i just triggered you you triggered my i triggered you you triggered my dreams cancel the views from the john podcast I've only, I've only had a couple of them 
about my teeth. I don't dream. I'm sure I do, but I I don't remember. Right. I, I never wake up going, oh, that was an interesting nightmare or a dream. It never happens yeah. to me. Yeah, never. Once in a blue moon, I'll have a dream, but I have to wake up in the middle of it to even know I was dreaming. Maybe I should go to the dentist then. I don't know, dude. Are your teeth good? Do you have any pain? No, they're, they're good. Yeah, but maybe I should ask them. Do you go twice a year? Do you brush and floss and yeah. all that shit? Yeah. Then I think you're probably good. I, 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 I don't know. I don't think the teeth falling out has anything <laughs> to do with... They're not falling out. I mean, No, but I know it, but that's what people are maybe dreaming the dent- of. Maybe the dentist will know. And it's just crazy that uh, so many people... Yeah, I don't know, dude. I, like What I'm trying to say is I don't think people dreaming about their teeth falling out has anything to do with the fact that their teeth are going to fall out. <laughs> I think it means something else, but what it means, I don't know. But here's what I'm thinking why so many people are sharing dreams. Okay. And Is this a conspiracy theory? This goes way down a conspiracy hole, but it's my own. All right. And, you know, I don't know if you and I have ever talked about how much conspiracy we believe, but I do believe that every that we are living in a matrix. Not like we saw in the movie where we're in a computer simulation. I'm just I just use the matrix theory to say that everything we know and everything we see this is kind is of what they want us to know and see. This is kind of what that movie that I watched was. It had like a matrix right theme to it. And here's what I'm thinking. What do we know about history? It repeats itself. No, 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 but I'm saying everything we know about history was taught to us and told to us, right? Yeah. Then how do we know that what we're being told really happened or that's the complete truth? We don't. No, we don't. Everything we know and see about for a technology is what we're shown. Right. What don't what haven't we been told? What haven't we been shown? So here's my point. I believe and I have my whole life that all human beings were born with more than five senses. Okay. Like we have a sixth sense and a seventh sense and even an eighth sense. Yeah. We just don't know how to turn on that function in our brain or even comprehend it. Yeah. We've never been taught how. I can agree with you on that. So I think unconsciously we do communicate sometimes with each other telepathically. We can share dreams, thoughts, memories. Mm -hmm. There are actually scientists out there that have been experimenting with this stuff hardcore lately, and it seems to be something there. Yeah. So cool. I think unconsciously people could be sharing the same dream because we are all cosmically connected. I know that kind of sounds, I'm sorry, gay, <laughs> but <laughs> I think it's true. I think we're all kind of cosmically connected. Yeah, we only. I, I think, think human beings have way more potential than we've ever discovered or been shown. I think there's proof that we only use like 30 or 40 percent of our brain. No, like 10. Oh, yeah, that too. But I do believe that human beings have functions that we haven't tapped into. Oh, yeah. And I believe people like in our government and certain people like that know about this kind of stuff. And uh, there was a great documentary I watched recently uh, called Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind. Did we talk about that last week? I saw the third kind. Yeah. Close Encounters of the Third Kind was a movie. Yeah. Close Encounters of the Fourth Kind was a movie. Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind is a documentary, and it's the best UFO documentary I've seen. It's about dumplings. Combo number five. (laughs) Why would it be about that? Because of the fifth kind? Yeah, yeah. And I have combo number five tattooed on my arm. (laughs) So it would be about dumplings, yeah. That's great. Invasion of the dumplings. That's great. You know what's funny? I'm sorry. You know what's funny? Yeah. And I don't know what just made me think of this, but uh, I went to the grocery store today. <laughs> we got to get back to this, though, the fifth kind. Yeah. we went. I, I went to the grocery store today, and um, the guy that pretty much I look up to and everyone else does, that pretty much runs, like, Western Massachusetts comedy scene, All right. a guy by the name of Tim Lovett. Uh, he's the guy that gave me my first ever show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he pretty much runs, you know, shit here and, uh, you know, out in the western half of the state, you know, not here in Boston, but out west. And uh, I, I bumped into him today in the grocery store. And I hadn't seen him in a while because COVID's got all the comedy shut down. Mm-hmm. So he's doing his podcast. I'm doing mine, blah, blah, blah. And uh, it was nice catching up with him. But 
we talked for quite a while. Yeah. And he reminded me back when I was super green, when I first got into stand up a couple of years ago, and how personal I would take it when I would bomb on stage. And I'm just like, yeah, dude, like everybody does. Every comic's talked about that. Mm -hmm. Like, dude, you have no idea how hard it is to go up on a stage, right? Right. In front of people, not just playing bass like you used to, but telling jokes. But when you're up there. That's more of like an intimate. Yeah. When you're up on a stage setting. telling jokes yeah. and nobody in the crowd is laughing at anything you're doing, they're just looking at you like you're fucking Bigfoot. Yeah. You know how uncomfortable it is? And then you start taking it personally because you think your material's funny as fuck. Yeah. And then you go up there and you're like, yeah, so I did this, this, and that. <laughs> and you're waiting for laughter and everyone's like... And you're just like, oh my god. I, you want to run for the hills. I kind of technically am. I'm, I mean, I'm a co-host. Right. <laughs> But that's what that's what it makes me think of, man. Yeah. Um, so he reminded me like how personally I used to take it on stage when I would bomb. Yeah. And I remember talking about this a lot when I first started the podcast. My first time I ever went on stage, there was another comic that heckled me when I got off, and I didn't handle it very well. I pretty much screamed at her. I oh, didn't. Yeah. I didn't scream at her, but I was like, like I gave her a fake laugh back, but like one of those mocking laughs, like a. <laughs> Like with a fucking finger and you know she's one of these super uptight uh you know lesbian social justice warrior yeah. i'm gonna cancel you if you say the wrong joke yeah and that was back when i was telling a joke about uh dating in this new term pansexuality that i learned and i used the word pansexual in the joke the wrong way so then she proceeded to go up after me and felt the need to embarrass me in front of the whole crowd and all the other comics that i used the definition of pansexual wrong Aww. and i couldn't just be like light-hearted about it like i took it like it like she was like trying to be a, a bitch yeah she was trying to she was like one, one up on you and that's what i call breaking the comic code mm -hmm. like when when you and i used to play gigs if a band walked off the stage and they were terrible would you be like dude you guys fucking sucked yeah. wait till you hear my stuff you know we didn't do that no nah, was if a comic has a great set you say was, great set if a comic walks off the stage and bombs you still say hey man great set i think you know what i'm saying yeah i think we ran into a couple bands like that though yeah so like that's why this comic just you know got on my nerves and thankfully after our little confrontation she never showed back up to that club which was fine with me but like you don't do that to somebody and that was like my first ever experience with stand-up yeah it took me so much courage to get up on stage and i'm getting heckled by another comic <laughs> like that's for the crowd to do not you <laughs> but uh we were just talking about uh um, close encounters yes close encounters of, of the, the fifth kind is a documentary on a free streaming service right now called tubi tubi t-u-b-y yeah I, heard him. I just hooked joe up with it my brother just watched it it's mind-blowing <laughs> Um, if you're interested in knowing all the secrets and all the history and everything the government is doing and not doing, I mean, you name it. If you wanted a complete overview of everything up to date that's going on with UFOs and extraterrestrials, it's covered in this two-hour documentary. Okay. Not only is it covered in the documentary, but the, but the head scientist that did this documentary is a guy named Dr. Stephen Greer. And he's been consulting and working with the government for like, I don't know how many years on top secret projects. I just want to know where Atlantis is. They don't talk about Atlantis, dude. It's, it's all about aliens. But what I'm trying to say There's is that- aliens involved in Atlantis? This doctor and his counterparts <clears throat> have developed a way through uh, telekinesis or thinking, thought. Mm -hmm. They're that, okay that's how these aliens actually drive around their ufos really they are hooked into their navigation systems through their minds so to speak if, huh. if that makes me if that makes any sense sure. you ever hear a bob lazar no okay bob lazar is the only and ever area 51 whistleblower all right in the 80s bob lazar used to work at los alamos 
You ever heard of Los Alamos? Yeah. It's a top secret jet propulsion laboratory. Yeah. He used to work there, and he was recruited to work for Area 51. All right. And in the mid and in the mid 80s, him and another scientist were tasked with reverse engineering the power source of a UFO. And they did a documentary recently. It's on Netflix. It's called Bob Lazar and Flying Saucers. And he tells you about everything he reverse engineered and saw inside Area 51. Hmm. And he's never been discredited to this day. They've tried to erase his life. They've tried to kill him, the government. It's crazy. But he describes that when he went into the alien craft for the first time, there, were no, there was no steering wheel. There's no yoke. There's no collective. There's no tachometer. Hmm. There's nothing. So the only thing they could hypothesize of how they might have flown these was by thinking. Yeah. Okay? And now I guess we know that to be true. That is how they interface with their technology. Because you got to understand, dude, if you do believe in aliens and you believe in all these UFOs that the government has said exist, they've, they've already come out and said, yes, UFOs exist. Here they are. Yeah. You've seen the footage. I have, yeah. Full disclosure has happened. Mm-hmm. It's just nobody's talking about it. So anyways, it's, so that seems to be the case. Huh. That these beings from other planets are literally millions or billions of years ahead of us in their evolution and technology. Elon Musk right now is days away from making his neural net public. Yeah, that's some scary stuff. So basically, in the future, we're going to be able to think about turning the TV on and the TV will just turn on you'll be able to get in your car and think about where you want it to drive to, and that's how it will go. But these species, and I think even human beings have this power, they can talk to each other just by thinking. Hmm. They can telecommunicate, and that's how they interface with their technology. They get into their UFO, and they think what they want the craft to do, and it just does it. Yeah. That's how it hooks up. So anyways, these scientists are now communicating with extraterrestrial beings telepathically. And they show you how they do it. And they show you footage. So this guy, Dr. Stephen Greer, can take you and a group out. They go out to a mountain range. And they stand around like in a circle. And they meditate. And they call these beings in. Huh. And sure as shit, dude you have lights that just fucking appear in the sky. They got footage like I've never seen before. That's some weird stuff. Crazy shit. I don't know if I want to go out on a mountain with a bunch of... Well, that's what this guy's... <laughs> the whole reason that these people are trying to disclose to the public yeah, I, I what it. this is about is because the governments of the world want us to believe that aliens are a threat. All right. They want us to be fearful of them. All right. And they're not a threat to us. Right. that's cool from if you listen to all these scientists that tell us unequivocally that aliens are real they'll tell you that the aliens are vastly concerned about us yeah and our planet they don't understand why we kill each other why we blow each other up while we have zero point or no uh what's it called we have all this advanced technology yeah and we're not using it we have free energy sources where we'd never have to use gas or coal or fossil fuels. Yeah. We could give free energy and clean water to everyone on the planet at zero cost, but we don't. No. We have nuclear bombs so we can wipe each other off the planet. Yeah. These beings don't understand it. No. It's, they don't get it. I don't get it either. And they also don't understand why, I guess, we're not at their level, where we use speech to communicate. They've been communicating through thought for millions of years. So that's why there's people out there that are trying to communicate on humankind's behalf with other civilizations to say, what's our deal? Knock the crap off. Right. Like, it's our government that's lying to all these people that you don't exist and that you want to kill us like an in Independence Day. Yeah. And that's all propaganda. They want to... That's why Trump made his space force, dude. Yeah. I'm sure. It makes sense. You used to listen to this show before you became a part of it. Um, I've, yeah. I've talked about it before. Um, it's been long speculated for the past three to four years that uh, the world government, if you want to believe that there's a world government that kind of operates on behalf of the planet, that they were going to stage an alien invasion. Huh. 
not one like you see in that Tom Cruise movie, oh, yeah. but something. That was a good movie. But something that'll say, "Hey, aliens are here!" And look what they just did. They just bombed a country, or they just shot down one of our fighter jets. That's what they're going to make it look like. Yeah. That's the next step. A couple of years ago, they came out and said UFOs are real for the first time in our history. Yeah. The next step is to say they're here and they're dangerous and you have to fear them the media will twist it everything whatever yeah it's all in place to happen and that's what these doctors are trying to stop they're trying to say hey we don't need to go down this road of fear with aliens they're not here to fuck us up dude you really think if they wanted to they could wipe us off this planet of course they could yeah so i don't so that's my point so i get you if you want to watch something cool with your girl man i can give you a, a number of things to watch all right moving on Valentine's Day, man. Yeah. What do you got? What do you got in your mind about Valentine's Day? I don't know. Day? I wanted Hallmark to... what? holiday. What? Hallmark? Yeah. I hate Hallmark Channel. Dude, I am <laughs> I am Scrooge to friggin' Valentine's Day you're, as Scrooge is to friggin' Christmas. You're a Cupid Scrooge? Yeah, man. <laughs> if I could yeah yeah, I mean, it's great. I, I was just wondering, like like back in the day what what did you do for Valentine's Day? Like in school and stuff like that. Like, Because what I remember about Valentine's Day was... Well, all the typical corny stuff back in school. I mean, in grade school, everybody made the cards. Yeah, we used to put like a paper bag with our name on it in front of our desk and exactly. like tape it. And then you get all your, you know, yeah, cards. I, f I forget how we got the cards, though. Cause then you got the hearts that said, I love you on it. And yeah, because I forgot how we got it, though. Like, because I don't remember, like... There wasn't like a carousel of people like walking around. It, it just spontaneously appeared there. Well, I'm willing to bet you with today's kids and in, and in today's climate, with ev with you know everybody getting participation medals and stuff, yeah. that they might not even do Valentine's Day the way we did it. No, they, because think I'm, sure about they, it. I'm sure they don't. Think about it. Back they, in our day, when we were in like fifth, sixth grade, and mm -hmm. we had those those pockets you're talking about. Yeah. Some people would get more Valentines than others. Like if you yes. were the most popular boy yeah. or girl, and that's what it everybody was. wrote you a Valentine. And other people wouldn't get as much. But back in the eighties, we we weren't butt hurt by that kind of stuff like kids are today. So I'm guaranteeing you, like they must have some kind of system in schools today where the kids have to give everybody equal amounts because you can't have one kid that gets one valentine and one that gets one from everybody in the class right because then that kid's gonna be hurt because he's gonna cry yeah. the parents are gonna sue the school <laughs> you know they still sell the cards so they must do that yeah but i'm saying that they they must have strict rules about it right to where everybody gets an equal amount of valentines right right you understand what I'm yeah trying to say? I, I got you because I, nowadays kids if they're not treated fairly, it's if be everyone doesn't get a first place trophy, the whole town erupts, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think I got like six or seven cards back when I was yeah, like eight I, or nine. I didn't get a lot. I, I can like, always remember getting a decent amount. I didn't get the least, but I didn't get the most either. I was a smelly kid in school, so I, really <laughs> <laughs> I could picture that. I could picture that. Absolutely. You know, I even be, I I wonder if uh, cancel culture and all that kind of bullshit has gotten a hold of those candies yet. You don't talk about the hearts. Yeah, the chalk candy. No, not the chocolates. No, the chalk. Yeah, the, it tasted yeah. like a powdered chalk. Yeah, it's the powdered chalk candy. Nasty. You know, I like the pink ones though. They had like a little bit of flavor. You know what I'm talking about? I know the ones that say "hug me" or "love me" or whatever. That's what I'm saying. Do you think they still make those with all those expressions? Because some of those expressions now are probably offensive to people. Oh, they make like hot stuff. They make dirty ones now. Yeah, but I I don't know. <laughs> but you can see where I'm trying to go with <laughs> yeah, this, right? Yeah. I wish you could steer me in that direction. I'm but sorry. Like, what were some of the uh, things they'd say? They'd be like hot stuff, sexy time. Yeah, like I bet you they can't say any of that stuff anymore. Like all of it has to be like non-sexual, plutonic. You can't like insinuate that someone's a boy or someone's a girl. Yeah. It's probably why they changed Valentine's Day to Friendship Day. Probably. Like why don't they just change it to like happy every all inclusive everyone gets a medal. I don't know. They can have a holiday every day. I telling you, dude, it's crazy. Yeah. But I remember getting getting a card from this one girl she was like she sat next to me you know the wooden desks we were just tiny we were kids you know yeah and she like i like picked out the card and i like looked at her and she gave me like this look the stare and she's like she gave me that wink and she was like 
she blew kisses at me. I was like, whoa. What grade was this? I was like eight or nine, and I was like, whoa. It was like taboo stuff going on. Dude, I don't think eight or nine year olds when we were that age, we don't even, I don't, I don't even think we knew what sex was. No, we didn't. And that's the craziest thing is, is like now you got eight and nine year olds that are looking at like Pornhub all day long. <laughs> And then they get to like puberty and like they can't even get a boner with their first girlfriend because they've been looking at like hardcore porn. Yeah. We didn't have any of that growing up. No. We didn't grow up in that time. So like everything was so new and so fresh to us and we had to learn the hard way. But you look at these kids now and I think that's actually like a legit problem. It there is. is there is so much access to porn now, but that by the time a young woman or young man gets into a relationship like they have to like do like yoga poses yeah, to hard. get off. Yeah. They just can't make love. Like nothing get cuz they've been exposed to all this yeah. hardcore shit. I think there's other I mean there's uh, there's uh, there's people that obviously have problem like with their system that maybe aren't able to climax naturally. But I know what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm just saying dude that like if if you are exposed to a lot of sexy stuff and porn when you're a kid, yeah, and then you finally get to that place, it's gonna desensitize you, yeah, so to speak. The more you pollute your mind, the right, the worse. Whereas we didn't have that kind of porn no, at all. We weren't, yeah, we weren't. So when we got in a room with our girlfriend for the first time like it was all brand new was, we didn't know what we were doing you had to get tips from your friends it was natural yeah you know but nowadays these kids like like literally have to have like eyes wide shut sex parties that you know yeah. it's like mouth. i feel bad man like i don't know mouth hugs i just love the time <laughs> we grew up man what we, we got to get better at this why <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even mention which episode we're in. What episode are we in? I don't know. It only says it 15 times 72? before the show. I don't know. What episode is it? It's 71. 71. Welcome, everybody. We're only an hour and five minutes into the show. Welcome to episode 71. Ready to start? That was just the skit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the first hour of the show is just our first bit. Now we're going to start the show. Welcome, everybody. How you doing? I'm John Ares, and he's Josh... Writer, don't repeat it. Josh Ryder. Oh, you did it. <laughs> I did it on purpose. <laughs> all right, everybody. That is unfortunately all the time we have this week. But tune in next week for another episode of the Views from John podcast. Another mess. Once again, I'm John Ares, and he's Josh Ryder. He's Josh Ryder. I, am. I still am. <laughs> he's still Josh Ryder. <laughs> he will be next week. He was last week, and next week I'll be John Ares. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Thanks give for your, listening. Give your significant other a kiss for me. Mwah. That is unless they have a hanging appendage, in which case you can keep that kiss to yourself. A Thank you, everybody. Appendage. Like a fupa? What is that? A hanging appendage? Yeah.